Hi, everybody. So really excited to be having this conversation today with our head of technology. This is Jason Zalewski. Uh, he is a staking DeFi tech mining mastermind. And uh, you guys had a couple questions for him. So we're going to do a quick AMA posted on our YouTube about, you know, what's going on at HUD8. And uh, we will take it from there. Thanks for uh, joining us today, Jason. No problem. Pleasure to talk with you and the, uh, the Twitter sphere as well. Yeah. So, okay. So let's get right into it. Um, one of our investors slash wonderful analyst, Blonity, asked, what is Hut doing with the old miners? Because they are still profitable. Are they not? So, yes, they are still profitable. Um, and they have been essentially the entire last 10 months really. And then especially now with the drop in difficulty, they continue to be profitable. So uh, they are active, they're plugged in, they're mining, um, and they're continue to provide a good return, especially given that they're completely paid for and uh, totally uh, basically depreciated at this time. So it's a, it's a, they're plugged in and mining <laughs> so I think that that on that note that speaks to hut in our business, i.e., we don't go. You know, we're very cognizant about not paying peak prices in bull markets for machines because um, that can obviously suppress profit margins exponentially once the price of Bitcoin comes down. And the fact that we're constantly refreshing our fleet about twenty five percent every every six to twelve months this is proof of the pudding that that strategy works because we have now fully depreciated miners that are profitable, like you said, and mining in the money. Yeah. Like typically if you look at the, the ASIC hardware market, new machines are priced to really get a return roughly around a year, uh, depending on if you're buying directly from the manufacturer on the brokerage market. So essentially what that means is you have to operate it for an entire year before you earn back the cost of that miner. Oh, so, so we have these machines that we have been uh, operating for a number of years that have fully, fully paid back. And now the only expense is some slight repairs and maintenance as well as the operation. So there's no CapEx, there's no payback. It's, uh, awesome. That's super cool. Okay, next question. How often will profitability be reviewed on altcoin mining and how quickly can we switch to mine a different coin with the NVIDIA miners if uh, another coin becomes more profitable than Ethereum? And for the audience, just to, so you guys remember, our strategy right now is mine Ethereum, but then get paid out on the pool level in Bitcoin. And we're able to do that with the NVIDIA miners we just purchased at less than $3,000 Canadian per coin, per Bitcoin. Um, but Jason, over to you. I mean, if, if the profitability metrics change, how hard is it to pivot and what does that look like? So, I mean, ultimately we have pretty, it's very flexible. Um, it's as easy as uh, clicking a box on the mining pool or even with some of the capabilities with Luxar and other pools, like we, it doesn't, we don't have to choose which altcoin we're mining. It will automatically mine the most profitable one. And then um, pay out in Bitcoin, right? And then pay out in Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, um, so like really it's as, as, as fast as clicking a button. Um, now there is like some, some delays, like it's not a hundred percent flash of lightning, but um, if we can move pretty quickly and to address the first question, how often will it be reviewed is we, we review our profitability at, at least once a day and what's, um, kind of how these things are monitoring. We have reports, we'll have re alerts. Um, so it'll, it'll be a, a constant review. Cool. That's cool. Um, you know, I have, so this is actually not just for an invest, our investors, but also myself, given um, what's been happening with some of the heat waves that have hit the West Coast. Um, how does having open air data centers benefit us during heat waves or just in general in terms of 
air containers benefit versus traditional infrastructure? So, so the containerized solution really allows us to take advantage of the, um, I guess the, the natural conditions of the prairies in Alberta. Um, so it's very dry um, on the prairies. There is a good uh, wind and natural flow through. It also allows us to not really allocate a lot of electricity to cooling. Um, it's, a, it's a very small percentage that we have to spend on cooling where um, in other in examples like a building, uh, there, there needs to be more active cooling um, generally. But in terms of containers, like we're, it's really flexible and we don't have to make changes for the entire fleet, right? Uh, if we were in a building, you, you more or less have to make a decision for how cool do you keep the building opposed to on a containerized solution is like, what's the best condition for this container? Awesome. How, much, how much airflow is it getting? Do I need to make small adjustments here for only this one container? So it's, it's a very modular setup and based on the performance and the conditions within a single container, we can adjust to, to make use of, uh, to optimize all the equipment in those containers. Very cool, very cool. Okay, and last question, what are you most pumped about right now in terms of the state of the mining or in terms of just the HUT-8 operations in general? Like what excites you the most and what are you most looking forward to over the next couple quarters? So, um, I mean, as head of technology, there's, there's, it's a lot more than just uh, getting mining equipment and plugging in. Uh, so we're a pretty sizable organization and what's really important is the operational technology as well. So that's kind of the more traditional uh, servers and switches and network architecture. And as we um, expand to a new site, it really gives an opportunity to um, evaluate and, and make changes to our infrastructure to really drill down into operational excellence. So what I, I mean, it's a great time to be a miner now because of all the difficulty adjustments, but also we have to keep in mind um, and make decisions for changes in the changes in the economic conditions of mining Bitcoin. So it's it's not just about operating when things are good, it's understanding when there's a bear market, when there's a turn in the market and how we continue to operate at a, at a profit. And that's really through implementing best practices and some really interesting operational technology so that we can mine profitably through largely any condition. And effectively protect our shareholders, both in obviously the bull market cycles, but predominantly in the bear market. Exactly. So it's yeah. not just about operating in fair weather. It's also yeah. operating in uh, down market conditions, protecting the um, really just being able to provide the highest value to shareholders in the company and uh, leverage the assets and infrastructure that we currently have. Awesome. And we'll grow into. So. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with our investors today. And we will be chatting with you soon. Thanks so much, Jason. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sue. Okay, bye.